What's going on, Nerd Army guys? Welcome to the newest episode of Exploring Comics. Now, guys, this is the first one we've done in quite some time. I uh, just haven't had a whole lot of time to lay out a lot of these characters, but I honestly, doing the research for this one and the next couple ones, I've definitely missed it it's something that i wanted to get back into so we're going to start with a character i'm very excited with right now and that is peacemaker yes now peacemaker is a dc comics property um he is an amazing character very very little done in publication wise but all in all peacemaker is a fun character and we get to see that in the second suicide squad directed by james gunn phenomenal job in that movie and peacemaker was funny entertaining ultimately he does the big heel turn spoiler warning and uh he is the baddie of it but ultimately we get to see him in the hospital bed, and now we have a HBO Max TV show, which is so fucking funny. It is phenomenal. Check it out if you haven't. So let's get right into this one, guys. Let's talk about Peacemaker. So Peacemaker would make his first appearance in comics in Fighting 5, issue 40. This came out way back in 1966. He was created by Joe Gill and Pat Boyette. Now, his first appearance in comics was not with DC. It was with Charleston Comics, and they had a short run, but when Charleston Comics ultimately went down, DC bought up a bunch of different characters from them, including The Question, Peacemaker, and Captain Adam. Now, Peacemaker would first show up in DC Comics during the Crisis on Infinite Earth series, which personally is one of my favorite series. So many crazy things happen in this series, including the death of the Flash, and the death of Supergirl. So beyond that, there's a crap ton of things that happen in this series. So check it out if you haven't. But yes, Peacemaker does get his first appearance in DC Comics. Crisis on Infinite Earths was a very, very cool series. I really did enjoy it. Crisis on Infinite Earth was a cool series. A lot of people loved it personally. I did. And it was about all the different Earths in the multiverse coming together and crashing together. This was a battle to stop the Anti-Monitor, and we lost some friends along the way. Back to Peacemaker. Now, the Charleston Comics universe does exist in the DC multiverse. It actually is contained on Earth 4. So the entire Charleston crew does exist on Earth 4. Crisis on Infinite Earths would change his backstory just a little bit, so let's talk about his origin. So Christopher Smith would make his appearance in DC Comics, and during the storyline, they explained that he is a only child that was actually born and grew up to become a pacifist diplomat and part of the Geneva Conference. Christopher Smith does receive word that there is a man trafficking arms through South America, and they are doing this in order to rile up the people on either sides and create a border war. So oh, Chris goes and he tries to confront this man. He tries to get him to stop his trafficking of arms through South America, but then he meets him, realizes that this guy is a giant piece of shit, and he decides that this is not going to work. He needs to move on. He needs to find another way. So Chris then realizes that there is no way to change this man's mind. He's going to have to break one of his vows and go against everything he's put his life towards. He has to break his vow of peace. And in doing so, he actually walks down into the cellar of his house to find a massive arsenal all laid out. Some of the craziest weapons you could ever think of. And the thing is, he designs all of them. Okay, that's a little weird. A pacifist that makes weapons. Hmm. So he makes the decision he's going to go ahead and go through with it. He's going to take this man out himself because stopping him and killing him is going to stop the thousands that would die in his place. So it's the greater good. Good job, Chris. So then he decides to don the Peacemaker outfit for the first time. He then straps a jetpack on his freaking back and he flies all the way to this guy's house, lays waste to him and his men, and he did this with a clear conscience because he is there to keep the peace by killing the bad guys. And that's the gist of the Charleston comics origin. Okay, so then when we got the DC origin, they did revamp it just a little bit. So this time, Christopher's name is Christopher Schmidt. He is the son of Wolfgang Schmidt. Now, Wolfgang Schmidt was a Nazi officer, and he's actually responsible for about 50,000 deaths at his hands. So, yeah, he's not a good guy. 
Okay, now the most messed up part about this origin is the fact that Christopher Schmidt, when he was five years old, his dad knew that it was the end. They were coming for him. He was going to have to pay for the crimes that he did. So right in front of Christopher on his fifth birthday, puts a revolver in his mouth and blows his freaking brains all over the damn wall in front of his son. Guys, holy shit. So his mom wanted to escape being associated with a Nazi piece of crap. So she took him after the death of his father and moved them across country, changed their names. Now he is Christopher Smith. See what she did there? Smith to Schmidt. Yeah. So then when he was old enough, he would join the military. He would actually go on to be an amazing soldier, one of the best in the entire military, mastering all different types of weapons. But Chris would ultimately screw this all up for himself when he made a shitty decision and he decided to mow down an entire village, men, women, and children, all in the name of peace. Holy shit. So while in jail, Chris was actually offered the chance to join the Peacemaker Project and go out and use his talents to take down bad guys, take down terrorists. This whole project was actually mainly focused on taking down and stopping terrorism. So Chris was all on board, jumped into it, started with the Peacemaker program. Shortly after it started, though, the program would be scrapped. And instead of going back to jail, Chris would be released and he would decide to take on the Peacemaker mantle for himself and continue the amazing project's goals and go ahead and go after terrorism all himself, backing up peace for life. So Chris would go on to stop so many bad guys and he would actually turn this around and fight terrorism extremely well. But eventually his mind would start to break and he would start to see visions of his dead father. Yes, the father that blew his goddamn brains out in Chris's face when he was five on his birthday. That guy. So at one point, Chris actually got so delusional that he thought that the souls of the 50,000 people his dad had murdered were actually talking to him inside his helmet. Now, this is extra screwed up because that's a mainstay in his wardrobe is this big shiny helmet. And imagine wearing that and think 50,000 angry Jews are screaming at you. That's not good. Now, the character itself has gone through many renditions, ups and downs and lefts and rights and spins and crazy shit happening and five-year-old gun blast in the face. Um, but yes, so this character, now we are talking about the John Cena rendition of it. So we did get Suicide Squad, which was the sequel or remake or whatever you want to call it. Some of the characters stayed, including Rick Flagg and Harley Quinn. Well, we got to meet a bunch of new ones. And I loved Peacemaker in this. John Cena was funny. I loved his rendition of this character. He was stupid, but at the same time, just such a hard ass. And I really enjoyed it. Then after that movie, he gets that big heel turn at the end. And then we see him left in the hospital in the after credits. Now we pick up with him and he's all healed up and he wakes up in his HBO Max TV show. And he's talking to the doctor about how the fucking x-ray doesn't show all his pectoral muscles and... It's just, this show is really, really funny. It's got a lot of great little ups and downs and just twists. These characters are great, amazing. By the end, you are going to love every one of these characters. So if you haven't checked this show out, definitely go check it out. Now, this is a different rendition of Peacemaker, obviously. It's a little more rash, a little more just like hardcore. And I really do enjoy how it's going. He is accompanied by great characters like Hardcore and Vigilante, who's Freddy Stroma's freaking phenomenal vigilante hardcore for life love that guy and if you guys don't know we actually are covering peacemaker episodically check right here for the newest episode and check out the playlist and get to know our buddy christopher smith but all in all peacemaker is a cool character and i hope to hear a lot more of him currently he's actually running in the suicide squad in the comics and it's a really cool run so check it out let me know your guys' thoughts on Peacemaker himself. Do you like this character? Did you like him before the James Gunn Suicide Squad? And how do you like the Peacemaker show? At the point of me filming this, it just ended and it was phenomenal. So let me know your guys' thoughts on that and let me know what you think of this character. If there are any characters you'd like to see me do an Exploring Comics episode for, put them down in the comments below. I'm always willing to take new ones. I did put a vote out there on the page and we got a little pullback and Kang the Conqueror will actually be the next Exploring Comics episode voted on by you guys. So keep an eye out for the next poll and I'll get your guys
guys' opinion on what characters should come next. All right, guys, see you around for more Exploring Comics. All right, guys, peace out. Thank you.